Getting stalked by a high-tech hacker and navigating school while on 11 hits of acid? Overcoming addiction and childhood abuse is only part of Chester Bennington's tragic story. As all music notes, Chester Bennington's childhood was far from what you'd call a happy one. Bennington was only 11 years old when his parents got divorced, and in an interview with Tom Bryant for Kerrang!, Bennington talked about how the broken family situation essentially left him as a young teen to his own devices. He lived with his police detective father, and though he had three siblings, only one largely absent one still lived at home, and the lines of communication were relatively non-existent. As Bennington himself has admitted, the situation took his mind to some pretty dark places and didn't exactly induce feelings of endearment, recalling, It was an awful time. I hated everybody in my family. I felt abandoned by my mom, my dad was not very emotionally stable then, and there was no one I could turn to. At least that's how my young mind felt. The only thing I wanted to do was kill everybody and run away. Unfortunately, these abandonment issues were just one part of Bennington's vast array of childhood troubles. Still, the fact that he didn't feel he had anyone to rely on at the home front probably didn't exactly help with his other problems. Just that act of seeing someone struggling and then letting them know that you see their struggle makes a difference. Chester Bennington was quite open about the troubles he endured as a child. In a 2008 interview with Tom Bryant for Kerrang!, the Linkin Park singer described the lengthy period of abuse he had to endure at the hands of an older kid, saying, I started getting molested when I was about seven or eight. It was by a friend who was a few years older than me. It escalated from a touchy, curious, what does this thing do, into full-on crazy violations. I was getting beaten up and being forced to do things I didn't want to do. It destroyed my self-confidence. The situation was terrifying for young Bennington, made all the worse by the fact that he felt that he didn't really think he had anyone to speak about the experience, even if he wanted to. He admitted to simply being too scared to say anything, something many abuse victims bring up as a reason they kept their trauma private. Bennington in particular said he was concerned people would think he was gay or was a liar. Bennington's abuse didn't end until he was 13 years old. He has stated that his later problems with substance abuse were in part to get away from this traumatizing period of his early life. On top of all his other struggles in his young life, Chester Bennington had a very hard time in school. According to NME, he was a frequent target for bullying. Unfortunately, one of the coping mechanisms he developed was drugs. That first person offered me, you know, an escape from reality. Um, I kind of took it. Per the singer's comments to Louder in 2016, his drug intake during these early years was copious and did terrible things to his health, with Bennington admitting, I was on 11 hits of acid a day. I dropped so much acid, I'm surprised I can still speak. I'd smoke a bunch of crack, do a bit of meth, and just sit there and freak out. Then I'd smoke opium to come down. I weighed 110 pounds. Bennington was eventually able to wean himself off his hard drug habit after his mother saw what state he was in at age 17, according to his interview for Kerrang!, but he continued to struggle with addiction for much of his life. His early substance abuse also resulted in at least one truly frightening encounter with shady elements when a criminal gang came to a house he was hanging out in and violently robbed the place. When Bennington's mother recognized the 17-year-old's addiction issues, she immediately placed him on house arrest. While Bennington was able to kick some substances, he soon turned to marijuana and alcohol. The latter substance, in particular, became a longtime demon for him. Bennington was quite open about his troubles with alcohol and openly described himself as an alcoholic, according to Kerrang. He also revealed that he was distancing himself from drinking because he didn't like what alcohol did to him, saying at the time of the interview, I choose to be sober now. I have drunk over the last six years, but I just don't want to be that person anymore. Nevertheless, alcohol continued to be present in his life, right down to the last moment. As TMZ reports, Bennington had some alcohol in his system at the time of his death in 2017. Due to his openness about the subject, people who knew Bennington also knew about his alcohol abuse issues. According to his ex-wife's book, Falling Love Notes, Memories of a Rockstar Wife, shortly before Bennington's death, he sent her a text that said he wouldn't be able to see their son in a while. Her immediate assumption was that Bennington had gone to rehab. Over the course of his musical career, Chester Bennington was plagued by multiple injuries, which he tended to suffer during Linkin Park performances and tours. According to Digital Spy, in 2007, Bennington was playing a Linkin Park show in Australia when he fell from the stage, breaking his arm in the early stages of the concert. After being patched up, he nevertheless managed to perform for the planned duration of the concert. In 2011, Linkin Park's own website broke the news that Bennington had injured his shoulder during their Asian tour and faced surgery. 
In 2015, NME reported that the singer had broken his ankle in a freak accident, landing on an errant water bottle while playing basketball during their hunting party world tour. Loudwire reported that once again, Bennington attempted to deal with the situation and used support devices during the performances. However, the ankle refused to play ball. Linkin Park's official site soon announced that the injury was simply too bad and the tour was canceled. According to Wired, Chester Bennington and his wife, Talinda Bennington, spent nearly a year being stalked by an obsessive fan. This particular stalker took the cyber approach, and in 2006, the person started harassing the Benningtons with mysterious phone calls and emails that ranged from unnervingly friendly to downright hostile. The stalker also managed to gain control of several of their online accounts. A private investigator managed to track the stalker's computer to a high-security nuclear research facility called Sandia National Laboratories, and after an arduous investigation process, the stalker turned out to be a 27-year-old employee of the lab with a high-security clearance. As the Associated Press reported, the stalker used a combination of detective work and her access to sensitive information to find out all sorts of things about them. In 2015, she recounted at least one incident where she deliberately traveled to Arizona after finding out that Bennington was there and spent the trip cyber-stalking the singer, hoping to find out his precise location and potentially meeting him. According to Rolling Stone, Chester Bennington was a 19-year-old unknown when he met and married his first wife, Samantha Marie Olet. After Linkin Park took off, they ended up getting a divorce in 2005, though they did remain on good enough terms to both have a hand at raising their son. However, Bennington told Kerrang in 2009 that the divorce was very hard for him, and the frustration took a heavy toll on him, saying, The difficult part was losing all my money, starting my life over, and having to pay the person I didn't want to be around in the first place. I felt like my life's work had been given away. Per Psych Central, a divorce is always a massively stressful situation, and dealing with it requires good coping mechanisms. Unfortunately, the one Bennington fell back on was alcohol, and he imbibed copious amounts in his despair. According to Mayo Clinic, hiatal hernia is a condition that if things get bad enough, you're in for all sorts of painful ailments that come when a part of the stomach squeezes into the chest through the same hole that allows the esophagus to come through the barrier between the diaphragm and abdomen. According to MTV News, Chester Bennington got the version where stomach acid gets into the esophagus muscle, which was extremely painful and also caused other issues that made life difficult, especially since Bennington sang for a living. The singer's hiatal hernia had been around for a while and caused all sorts of painful back, gastrointestinal, and stamina issues, which were only diagnosed as hiatal hernia fairly late in the game. One time, things got so bad that his stomach acid caused an infection in his throat. Things escalated during the album and tour cycle for Linkin Park's 2003's Meteora album, at which point it became apparent that surgery was in order. Describing his situation at the time, Bennington said, I'm kind of queasy all the time. I'm basically gonna be sick to my stomach until I have the surgery done. Every night when I sing, it kind of pisses off the hernia. Last night, I was vomiting when I was singing. According to Rolling Stone, Chester Bennington struggled with depression for much of his life and didn't hide his mental health issues. In an interview with the 102.7 KISS FM radio channel, Bennington talked at length about his depression and addiction problems, addressing them in public just as easily as he discussed his children and his music. This place right here, this 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 skull between my ears, that is a bad neighborhood, and I am, <laughs> I should not be in there alone. He openly described the way he needed to positively reaffirm himself in order to avoid falling into a bad mental state and how he had learned to keep himself busy to avoid wallowing in his own thoughts too much. In an interview with Chaos TV, Sean Dowdle, a bandmate from Bennington's old band Grey Days, revealed how the singer's worst mental health moments looked to the people around him. According to Dowdle, Bennington was usually a very positive person, but on occasion, he seemed to go through a darker period that shined through. According to Rolling Stone, Bennington himself was known to refer to his worst moments as a kind of second darker Chester Bennington inside him. Per CNN, Chester Bennington was great friends with fellow rock frontman Chris Cornell. According to Metal Hammer, Soundgarden vocalist Cornell was a great inspiration for Bennington when the future Linkin Park superstar was growing up. 
The two singers eventually met during a tour in 2008, and they made fast friends. Their family soon grew close, and Bennington even became the godfather of Cornell's son. Bennington described the relationship between the two rock singers as an instant connection. Unfortunately, their friendship only lasted less than a decade, as Chris Cornell died by suicide on May 18, 2017. Per Rolling Stone, the Linkin Park singer paid tribute to his friend on social media and performed an acoustic rendition of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah at Cornell's funeral. We decided to play uh, our song One More Light in honor of him to start this off. We love you, Chris. Chester Bennington died on July 20th, 2017, according to Rolling Stone. The singer was 41 years old. The cause of his death was suicide. As the news was reported by outlets like the Twitter account of Associated Press, Bennington's Linkin Park co-vocalist Mike Shinoda soon confirmed the situation on Twitter, writing, Shocked and heartbroken, but it's true. An official statement will come out as soon as we have one. Many of Bennington's acquaintances and fellow artists were soon reacting to the singer's death with shock and sadness. The future of Linkin Park has remained up in the air since Bennington's death, per Loudwire. The remaining band members' last performance was a 2017 tribute show for their departed singer. And in April 2022, Shinoda stated during a live stream that the band has no future activities on the pipeline. It remains to be seen whether Linkin Park re-emerges at some point in the future, but considering how instrumental Bennington was to the group's sound, it wouldn't be a shocking surprise if the surviving members of the group elected to remain on indefinite hiatus. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 or by calling 1-800-273-TALK-8255.